Okay, here are my solutions to homework two. Uh, problem one, given the uh, stress tensor and the elastic modulus and the Poisson ratio, determine the strain tensor. Uh, for that, you apply equation 2.11 from your textbook. An important thing to recognize there is that in your textbook, they are looking at the uh, strains that contain the rotation. So if you compare equation 2.11 to the equations in my notes, they're off by a factor of one half. And that's because the epsilons that I'm using are uh, symmetri symmetrized, and these are not. Um, next part of the problem is rotate 15 degrees about the y-axis. So if we say our x, y, and z axis are here, our y-axis stays y because we're rotating about it, the x-axis rotates 15 degrees, the z-axis rotates 15 degrees. This is going to be our transformation tensor. So we have cosine, I, I, I made these as columns of x, y, and z, and rows of x prime, y prime, z prime. Uh, so the y-axis uh, is 90 degrees to the x prime, 0 degrees to the y prime, and 90 degrees to the z prime. The x-axis is 15 degrees from the uh, x prime 105 degrees from the z prime because it has to go 90 plus 15. The z axis is 75 degrees from the x prime because it is 90 minus 15 and it is 15 degrees from the z prime axis. That's our transformation tensor and now we simply apply our strain transformations so we have to have a double sum. And you can put this in Excel or however you want to do it to get the right answer. Uh, problem two. First thing is to look up the elastic constants of gold and then transform the elastic constants into the uh, compliance uh, components. And then we're going to use direction uh, equation 2.20 from your textbook to determine the so-called directional Young's modulus, uh, which is actually just the uniaxial tension in the uh, IJK direction and your textbook gives us this EIJK. Uh, in that EIJK equation, there are these L's, L sub IJ, which are the direction cosines. Okay, the direction cosines. So if you have a vector, in this particular case, it's the you know, IJK vector, and we're looking at gold, which is cubic, so we don't have to think about any uh, coordinate transformations. So we got the EIJK direction, and we've got our x1, x2, x3 direction. The direction cosines are the angles between the x1 and the direction of interest, the x2 and the direction of interest, and the x3 and the direction of interest. So those are our alphas. The simplest way to get the angle is to use the trigonometric relation that the dot product of two vectors divided by the magnitude of those two vectors gives you the cosine of the angle between them. Uh, vectors are your friend. Don't work in geometry. It will make you crazy. Uh, so you can know the vector in the x1 direction is 1, 0, 0. And you know that the, these are i, j, k, whatever they're, you know, 1, 1, 0 or 1, 1, 1, depending on uh, which of the problems you're looking at. So you can put that in here and get your uh, angle. Okay, that's problem two. Uh, problem three is really about uh, looking up the I, J, K, L for each, and there's a table in your textbook. Uh, if not, you can find sources online. We know that the bulk modulus is C44, and the Lame constant is C12, and your textbook has table 2.2, which gives you a whole series of transformations within the isotropic uh, elastic constants. So you can use that to transform it. Problem four. Problem four is about drawing the bulk modulus. Okay, sorry, drawing the Mohr circle. Okay, so you know that you've got 150, you know you got 200, and you know you've got some strain. So basically, just draw some circle, right? 
great. You, got some, you draw some circle, you know that if you have some diagonal line here, that the stress represented by that line, one place uh, that the tip is going to cut here at 200, and the other tip is going to cut at 150. Well, because we know it's a circle and we know these two points, that means that we know the distance from the origin to the center of the circle, that's h, and I gave those in the notes, so that's uh, just the average of 150 and 200, so that's 175. And then we know the radius of the circle is uh, sigma 1, 1 minus sigma 2, 2 over 2, and that will give you the radius. Okay, great. Now the question is, what's that angle? How close are we to the principal axis? Well, we know the radius, and we know the distance from h to 200 is 25. Then we know just from trig that cosine of theta is 200 minus h over r. So we can find out the angle by taking the arc cosine of, of that. And that will give you the Morris circle representation. And the last problem, I just wanted a kind of a, a simple, uh, you know, linear elastic solution. You know, we, we know that the energy density is uh, dW is equal to uh, sigma ij uh, d uh, epsilon ij, and you would integrate this. Uh, but we're just thinking about the simple isotropic linear elastic case in which you've got stress and strain. So the work is one half stress times strain, that little triangle. And that gives us one half stress times stress over Young's modulus because we know the relationship between stress and uh, strain. And then we know the relationship between force and cross sectional area. So we know stress is equal to force over area. So that gives us this relation. So the work is going to be F squared over 2E uh, A naught squared. And that's the solution to problem five.